Welcome back to Dreamfall Chapters Book 4. We have just entered Markyria, now we're looking for Abnaxus's abode now that we have the key to it. Let's follow Crow and find it. I don't know why people believe magicals burn down Old Town. Why would they do that? It makes no sense. That's a very silly hat. <laughs> I fit right in with the locals. I really wish you had wings. So do I, Crow. Hey, are you okay? Sure, why wouldn't I be? I mean, April and... Of course I'm not okay, okay? But I'm okay. I'll be okay. It's okay. We're okay. Don't worry about it, okay? Okay. She's not the first friend I've lost, and she won't be the last. You learn to roll with the punches. It's either that or punch back. Real hard. I like their style. Maybe I can introduce a line of Arcadia-influenced fashion when I get back. I'm assuming this place is closed? It's locked. That's really odd. Right in the middle of a festival. Yes, we're taken in for questioning. I'm assuming I'm going the right way. So, how's business? Uh, pretty good. I mean, reaping's a great time for me. Plenty of customers. Even if those farmers are tight-fisted, they bring their own food into the city. They ought to do something about that. How? I mean, farmers bring food into the city. That's what they do. That's, you know, their whole thing. Yeah, but still. No, that makes no sense at all. I mean, that's what the bloody reaping is all about. Farmers harvest their crops, bring the produce into the city, sell it, and come reap Moon Eve, we all enjoy the feast of reaping. Oh, no, but is that what we really want from those peasants? Well, yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, glad I listened to that conversation. Uh, I think that's up next. This is abode right there, isn't it? How's your memory coming along? Do you remember anything about this place now? I worked so hard to remember, but no, not much. It was winter. True. Winter changes everything, what with the snow and the ice and all. And the city looked different. Smaller. It probably has grown a bit. But no, I don't really remember anything at all. Perfectly fine. I also remember very little, but then I am a bird with a bird brain. So what can you expect? Oh, jams. Is it safe to bring back food to Stark? Is that even possible? Probably not. Oh, jams. Goldenberry conserve. That looks scrumptious. What's going on here? Whoa. Isn't that... Are they trying to chop down Abnaxus's abode? Great. That's great. Looks like they're hitting a magic wall, though, so I don't think they're gonna get in. What the hell do they want, though? So this is it. A boat of, uh... Big, ugly thing what speaks funny? Apparently so. And there's someone else here. Apparently so. Huh. Once this unholy tree's been knocked down, the electric will take me seriously. They'll see I have the power to get things done. Maybe then I can stop licking the asses of the Azadi. Goddess this and goddess that. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth, sucking up to their feminine deity. Give me a world without gods and goddesses, a world ruled by humans and true Northlanders. No magicals, no supernatural women folk, no superstitious invaders. A world by and for man, with the woman in her rightful place at home. <coughs> 
Go on, put your back into it, man. This is pathetic. It's merely ah, a member of the voting public. Uh, I honour Hilary Esquire at your service, madam. But uh, I'm sure I don't need to introduce myself to you. Hmm? You've seen my face in print and in public appearances. You know me as an honourable and truthful fellow who stands with the common man. And woman. We shan't forget the common woman. Yes, yes. I'm, of course, running for Commissioner of City Watch, a position sorely and desperately in need of new blood. The watch needs strength. It needs direction. It needs humanity. In other words, it needs me. He's gunning for a political position with the City Watch. I wonder what his end game is. It looks like... Why are you trying to knock down this tree? Well, it's not just a tree. It's an affront to common decency and humanity. This so-called domicile was the dark and dangerous den of one of the most militant of magicals. An abominable beast that threatened our young and our women by its mere existence. Eradicating this occult stone tree from our historic green is not just my election promise to voters, but my God's given responsibility as a human being. Let's see if I can get him talking about himself. He sounded more than happy to do so. It's Hilaris, right? Oh no, Hilaris Esquire, licensed solicitor, and your candidate for Commissioner of City Watch. It's an unusual name. It's unique, certainly, but it's a Northlander name with deep roots in Mercurian society. My father, the esteemed Hubert Hilaris Esquire, served dutifully for many years on the council. He was respected, feared, and admired by all. Of course, th that was before he was beguiled by that. Dalmari witch. She used her wily sorcery and beastly sensuality to lure my father away from his family. Away from... from us. I've sworn to restore our sacred heritage. The witches shall burn, humanity shall prevail, and the name Hilaris shall no longer be the butt of spiteful jests. Slow motion axe swinging in the background. <laughs> He appears to be an Asadi supporter. I wonder how genuine it is. Still haven't thought of something I can use to get them to go away. I take it you're happy with the Azadi occupation? No, 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 I wouldn't call it an occupation, not anymore. The Azadi came to save us from the Tyrant invaders and they stayed to protect us against all magicals. They're our benefactors, not our oppressors. But the resistance has put us all at risk. Unless we re-establish human dominion over the Northlands, we'll be vulnerable when the Azadi eventually return to Azadir. For believe me, they will. Oh, they've promised as much. This is not their land, and this is why I run for office. To build a Mercuria by and for humans, one that can stand the test of time and stand up against occult invaders, we must invest in the future. And you can't spell future without owner Hilaris. You're running for City Watch? Indeed, the Watch is in dire need of strong male leadership in this time of dark crisis. Male? As you well know, the current commissioner, a person of the female persuasion, has failed to maintain order in the city in these dark, trying times. She's been soft on sorcery, magnanimous with magicals. She's indulged the occult, and she's extended an open hand to non-humans, acting in discord with our foreign benefactors. Oh, it's understandable she's weak. She's sentimental. She's merely a woman, and she's not been able to properly inspire the men of the Watch to take appropriate action against our occult immigrants. As soon as I'm elected, this will change. We will honor Azadi law and make Mercuria pure again. No more magic. No more magicals. And our women folk can once again return to home and hearth to be pampered and protected by their husbands, fathers, and brothers. As it should be. Yes, yes. Crow, can you come over here and peck this one's eyes out? Ugh, I've had enough. Well, best of luck with everything. 
Luck is the lazy man's excuse for failure. Luck is an occult idea. I create my own destiny, young madam, and so should you. Here's my advice to you. Find yourself a decent human husband and start breeding decent human babies. Oh, God, please shut up. Remember, I've... <laughs> is that the best you can do? I thought maybe if I listened long enough, I'd come up with an idea of what to do to get rid of him, but nope. I'd take the axe myself if I hadn't just moisturized my hands. This, you know, this dry air, well, you understand. Ow. Ow. I could push him. Honor Hilaris, an unpleasant man with an unpleasant name. He's standing in the way of our mission. We must get rid of him without murdering anyone, of course. Can I just push him? If it wasn't for Honor's goons, I would thump that reactionary misogynist on the head. No court would convict me. It would be justified homicide. Maybe Crow has some idea. What are you doing? Don't force me to take over and embarrass you in front of everyone. It's a tree, God damn it. Not a necromancer's stalled fortress. I feel better having Crow around, even though I'm not sure what he can do. Still, a useless sidekick is better than no sidekick. I, I'm not saying he's useless. <laughs> he just said he's useless. Good bird. <laughs> Soft feathers. <laughs> I'm petting a talking bird in a parallel universe. This is going to require years of therapy. So what now? I don't know. Do you have any suggestions? We kill them, bury their bodies, and then go about our lives as if Nothing happened. That's disturbing. I know. I'm dark. I'm really not in the mood for killing today. Or any day. Fine, then you come up with something. Hmm. So I can tell you to go somewhere. I don't know if that would really accomplish anything. Oh. What? It's down on on our shoulders? Crow, could you fly over there for me? Why? Just trust me. Why? <laughs> Jesus, please, Crow. <laughs> Fine. Pardon me for wanting to play a role in my own destiny. I'll do it. I don't know why either. We'll figure it out as we go. Is that the best you can do? Oh, I took it. Filthy magic. Damnation. Where did it go? Hmm. Ah, God's damn talking bird! Magical aberration! If I get my hands on a filthy feathered thing, I'll twist it, scrawny little... <laughs> ah, language, language. What can I do for you, young madam? Let's play this nice and cool, Zoe. About that talking bird that's bothering you. Yes, what about it? I just saw it. Where? Where? Um I'm the table. Go look for that goddamn bird over there. What am I doing? Can I do a sneak kill on you now? That person's a zombie. They're actually dead. They're just animated by... Uh, damn it, what's the word? Not Necronomicon. I, I don't know. The Dead Arts, whatever it's called. What kind of shoddy job are the Azadi doing when there are still talking birds flapping about? They should provide us with a few of their explosive sticks so that we can Okay, so I mean, obviously I could tell Crow to go to that place and then tell them to look where Crow actually is. I don't know what that would accomplish, but I guess I'll try it. Within the city walls. Again? 
Seriously? Ugh. Fine. Steal you filthy little fowl. Oh no. What? Not again. Hmm. Honor Hilaris, an unpleasant man with an unpleasant name. Let about that talk. Yes, what? I just saw it. You did. Use your finger, woman. Point. It's either hay table or wagon. Oh, or fountain. Looks like that's it. I get him to like stop looking for the bird. After talking to Mr. Hilaris, I want nothing more than to administer a solid beating. But I think I'll leave that for next time. Maybe I've got an idea. I still don't know what I'm doing, but I have an idea. Have you seen a filthy talk? About that talk. Yes, what about it? I just saw it. Again? Show me. That filthy chattering fowl must be over there somewhere. Go check. Yeah, yeah, I know the drill. Are you doing this just to annoy me? Because it's working. Okay, well, move. I've got you now. Well, that one's distracted. We. Gerana. Do something? Did we do something? What am I doing? Steal you filthy little fowl. <laughs> really? Soft headed fool. <sighs> we'll need to carry him home to have someone look at his head. The tree can wait until tomorrow. You do the carrying. I'd do it myself, but someone needs to lead the way and keep an eye out for uh, potholes. That was brilliant! First, I did my thing, and then that goofball tried to hit me with a rock, and then stuff happened, and Dung for Brains got knocked out, and then they all left! End scene. It was almost like one of those puppet shows that Wizard puts on in the square. It was hilarious! I'm glad you enjoyed it. That's the most fun I've had since... since... I don't know. I guess since I hung out with April all those years ago. Aw. That's so sad. Also, that puzzle was terrible. My god. What a terrible puzzle. Anyway. Locked. But I have the key. Indeed. But the question is, do I know how to use it? The answer is... Yes, apparently I do. This place looks a lot bigger on the inside. It is a lot bigger on the inside. Okay, this is freaky. I feel dizzy. <laughs> there must be magic here because this makes no sense. Things can't be bigger on the inside than on the outside. Then again, why should I be surprised? I've seen weirder things. Weird is my new normal. Right, so, clues. Abnaxus must have been a big believer in crystals. Or maybe this is how people light their houses. Maybe this is totally normal for Arcadia. Those are some portentous looking books. I wish I could read them. That's interesting. Who the hell would... Who's... Oh, God. I must apologize, ma'am. I didn't mean to frighten you. Zoe Castillo. You're the last person I expected to find here. Brian Westhouse. I thought he looked familiar. Brian Westhouse. God. 
Have we? I can't remember if we've seen him since the very, very first game, The Longest Journey. I can't remember seeing him except in that game. But maybe we've seen him recently and I just don't remember from the previous books. I forgot what his whole story was about, though, but I remember meeting him as April. He's right. This is a very odd coincidence. I remember him from my last visit to Mercuria. Brian, right? Right. Brian. Brian Westhouse. <laughs> we spent a few days in cramped quarters on a small airship. I'd be surprised if you didn't remember me. It's been a confusing year. For a while, I remember nothing. Even when I tried my best to remember, I couldn't. Well, not until now. I know that feeling all too well, Miss Castillo. So you're back in Mercuria, and in this place of all places. How in the name of the balance did you get inside? People have been trying for years, but this house has strong wards. Venar magic, the oldest there is. And now I understand why it's a treasure trove. Wait, is that the Annals of Dreaming? Good God, that's a lost treasure. Only five were ever made. Why be secretive about it? I'm sure I can trust him. Yeah, he's trustworthy. I guess it helped to have a key. I actually didn't know it was supposed to be so difficult to get in. So there was a key all this time. The door wasn't locked with a spell. I was right. Where did you... An acquaintance. Pure luck, I guess. So what are you looking for here? The ambassador disappeared more than ten years ago, as I'm sure you know. I should trust Brian. There's no point hiding anything from him. I'm trying to find out where Abnaxus went after he left Mercuria. And you believe the answer's in here somewhere. You're probably right. Looks like I picked the perfect day for a stroll in the green. I was wondering why that odorous Hillerus fellow wasn't still trying to chop this tree down. Now I know. Let's see if we find anything interesting, shall we? This place has the slightly tacky ambience of a New Age shop. What did that say? Interesting. Why does the color change? Looks like a handwritten note. Hmm. Amnaxus was a very well-read man, thing. There are enough musty old books here to fill a university library's special collection of musty old books. This is fascinating. Those are some portentous looking books. I wish I could read them. Since this place is so much bigger on the inside than the outside, I thought maybe it existed in a pocket dimension of sorts. But I can still see Mercuria out there, so... Amnaxus must Almost have made the bed before leaving for good. Right. Here That's kind of sad and eerie. Someone's been sleeping in my bed, said Papa Bear, before mauling Goldilocks and devouring her whole. Don't ever mess with fairy tale creatures. What does this mean? Hmm. Have you found anything of interest? Keep looking. This place is a treasure trove. Perhaps I have to give him a note? What do you think this means? Hmm. I'm not sure there's much to learn from that one. Oh. Well, in that case, what did I miss? Oh.
This looks interesting. The first dreamer references in the annals of dreaming. Uh, that's this book right here. And the chapter about the first dream, it's certainly a starting point. Let's see what it says. Can you read that book? I've lived in Arcadia for decades, and there hasn't been much to do aside from studying ancient texts, so yes, I can read this book. Let's see, the chapter in question speaks of the Ular. They are said to be wardens of the Dreaming One, whatever that means. It's a rough translation, the English language isn't quite up to the task. The Ular and the Yete, one people that split into two, that sounds familiar. It says here the Yete left the Purple Mountains to go south to burrow into the ground something about a well of dreams. I mean, I don't know how much of this is true and how much is fantasy or prophecy. It's a, a difficult book to decipher. There's also something about two dreamers becoming one. It's vague. This is almost certainly a prophecy of some sort. The Ular live on Cloud Peak. It's in the mountains of Yedra. Where's that on the map? Ah, there it is. Straight north across the plains, right in the middle of the border mountains. This is an old book, so I don't know if they still live there. I've never heard of the Ular. They might all be dead. I'm not sure how useful this is to you, but there it is. That note fell out of the annals when Westhouse turned the pages. What do you think this means? Hmm. Uh this note fell out from the pages of the annals. What's a soulless stone? I'm not sure. The soul stone was taken from Luke's by the warlock Clax. It must be retrieved or the past, present, and future will cease to be. That sounds ominous. It does indeed. I don't know about any soul stone, but I'm guessing this Clax fellow does. I wonder if Abnaxus means old Roper Clax. April told me his story. He was a two-bit wizard who resided in a floating castle up north near the border mountains. April said she taught him a lesson. She didn't get into any details, but he lost his castle. Last I heard, he's doing children's theater here in town. Reformed, apparently, if that's a thing a wizard is capable of. Sounds like this soul stone is important. How do I go about finding it? The clue's right here in the text. Roper Clacks, Wizard, and Puppeteer. I'd start there if I were you. Guess I should go find him. Abnaxus must have been a big believer in crystals. Or maybe this is how people like their houses. Abnaxus left so much maybe behind. This is totally There's a wealth of information Arcadia. here. I don't know where to go next. I should stay here and look for more clues. Oh, there's more clues. This place has the slightly tacky ambience of a new age shop. Ah, uh, I knew I'm sure it. Abnaxus I knew won't it. mind me borrowing this. I'll return it to him in person, if I make it to Cloud Peak. Ah, there we go. That's everything. I think I have what I need. I should get going. Should we... Would you mind terribly if I stayed here to read these books? Well, this is... it's private property, isn't it? Abnoxus isn't coming back, and I've been itching for a chance to peruse his library for years now. I promise I won't remove anything or make a mess. Ah, uh, I can't. I mean, I trust Brian pretty well, but... I promised that I would look after Abnaxus' stuff. And leaving it unlocked behind me is not a good idea. He might have the best of intentions, but I made a promise to blind Bob. I'd feel awful if anything happened to Abnaxus' abode.
I'm sorry. I don't think I can let you stay in here. I'm not sure I need your permission. I... Only joking. <laughs> I understand. Mm -hmm. I'll take my leave now, Miss Castillo. I certainly hope we'll see each other again soon. Well, that was creepy. Maybe I don't trust him that much anymore. Didn't you say something about a wizard and a puppet show? No. No, you did. You said something about a show in the square. I did not. Crow. Oh, right, right! Roper Clax's Fingerlings! Man, that show's great. A modern classic. Clax. He's the wizard April Ryan fought. That's right. He was behaving badly, so she fought him and trapped him inside some sort of calculating machine. Pretty clever stuff. Where can I find this puppet show? I'll show you. Be the puppet show. I feel better having Crow around, even though I'm not sure what he can do. Still, a useless sidekick is better than no sidekick. I, I'm not saying he's useless. Let's see him back there. If you'll seek an autograph, you must purchase my book first. It's on sale today, only- No, sorry. I, I need to talk to you. Talk, hmm? Well, I only have a few minutes before my show begins, but I'm sure I can spare a couple of them for a pretty young thing like you. Didn't he and April have some sort of confrontation? Let's remind him of that. <laughs> I'm just curious how he's going to react. Do you remember April Ryan? April Ryan? Oh, yes, of course. Absolutely. Certainly. Naturally. The bit... <clears throat> the brave young woman who came to my castle and stole it. And helped me put my sorceress past behind me. How could I possibly forget? Not harboring any bad feelings? He's obviously got some issues with April. I'd be curious to learn more. So, about April. Why, why does everyone want to talk about April Ryan? She was just a weak little human who stumbled onto things she didn't... <clears throat> <laughs> no, 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 I must uh, apologize. You see, April and I had some disagreements in the past. I'm past that now. I'm a different person. <laughs> As for April Ryan, yeah, yeah, she suffered an ignoble death at the hands of our Azadi benefactors. What a shame. What a terrible, terrible shame. <laughs> this has to be the right man. You are Roper Clax, right? The wizard? Who told you that? Well, that sign, for one. No, th the wizard part. Who told you? I mean, uh, I'm merely a humble finger puppeteer trying to make an honest living in a cold and heartless world. <laughs> But you were a wizard once. Fully rehabilitated, I don't go anywhere near sorcery, not anymore. You should really read my highly acclaimed and best-selling memoir, oh. A Farewell to My Wizarding Ways. 
It's a thrilling story of redemption and romance, of dashing heroes and wicked villainesses, of flying castles and curious calculating devices. Every word of it as true as the night is dark and the day is bright, of course. <laughs> I might as well get right to it. Do you recall owning a soul stone? A soul stone? I... I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I was just wondering, since there are so many impressive tales about your powers where I come from. And where would that be? Um... That was a long time ago. In another life. I've moved on. I'm a different person now in every way. I was just wondering what happened to the stone. She took it, that bitch. Balance? Pardon me? I don't know where that came from. Who? The Yaga. The Wicked Witch of the North, as these simpletons call her. As if they have any idea who and what she truly is. She lurks in Riverwood in the dark places. She feeds on that stone like a... <laughs> like I said, that's in the past, and I've left it all behind long ago. Now I make an honest living bringing joy to children through my most excellent and revolutionary finger puppet theater. And on that note, I must beg your pardon, young miss. The show is about to begin. <laughs> Can we please talk again afterwards? I have some more questions. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. After the show. After the show. Yes, 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 yes. Toodaloo! Yes, here we go. This is gonna be so good. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, humans and... Well, humans. And you, Azadi soldier standing over there, you're welcome to watch, just don't rattle your sabers or rustle your suits. Uh, welcome to this morning's performance of... The Fingerlings! Uh, I am your host and puppeteer, Rupert Klax, esteemed thespian and raconteur, author and entrepreneur. My book is available for purchase with a free, personalized dedication. <laughs> Speak to me after the show. A donation is both appreciated and expected. Drop your coins into the box after the show. Remember that every iron piece goes towards a good purpose. Woohoo! Go fingerlings! My beloved fingerlings! Handcrafted reproductions of renowned actors from across Arcadia, immortalized in finger puppet form by skilled artisans using only the finest fabrics and natural materials these lovely creatures are as dear to me as children and as talented and protean as the finest human players you're all welcome to approach the stage after the show of course to admire my finely crafted miniatures up close and intimately no food no touching no children and now, beloved audience, prepare yourselves for a journey into mystery for a true story of wizardry and magic. I present to you the tale of the good-hearted wizard and the villainous winch. Once upon a time in the distant north, there lived a kindly old wizard in a wonderful flying castle. This very friendly wizard liked to tease and toy with the people of the land, and sometimes he would do silly things like uh, turn them into stone or furry animals and bottle up the wind. <laughs> Naturally, he meant no harm, and the people of the land loved the wizard like they would a grandfather, a very young and very, very handsome grandfather but one day an evil sorceress from a distant land came to visit the kindly wizard 
This ugly, selfish witch didn't understand that the wizard was only trying to make people happy. She used her dark sorcery to steal all of his possessions and trap him inside a tiny little box where the gentle wizard was barely able to breathe. The poor old man was trapped for many moons inside this box before a benevolent wandering god arrived to free him from his prison. The wizard pledged eternal allegiance to the wandering god in return for vengeance against the cruel witch who trapped him. Together they... There he is, Commander. The dangerous loon who's corrupting our youth with his occult finger rings. What? What's this? What? What are you doing? What's going on? You can't... Hey! Hey! Hands off! You're teaching children of magic, old man. You ought to know better. Release me, you dishonorable brute! By the authority vested in me by the Greater Azadi Empire and the Emissary, and in accordance with provisional imperial law prohibiting any and all teachings of occult magic, I'm taking you into custody. You can't do this! You don't know who I am! Tell it to the Magistrate Wizard. My fingerlings! My precious handcrafted fingerlings! No! I cannot believe that they arrested him. Okay. What a travesty. I didn't see that coming. I guess the Azadi aren't fans of creepy puppet shows either. I think it had more to do with him being a wizard. Okay, shit. So what now? He was my only lead to the Soul Stone. All I have to go on is something about a Yaga and Riverwood. Riverwood? I know Riverwood. I've been to Riverwood. If it's Riverwood you need, I know how to get to Riverwood. Really? And the Yaga? The Wicker Witch? I don't know anything about Yagas. But I do know something about witches in Riverwood. On my last trip there, we had a close encounter with one of them. That witch is toast, of course, but I can probably find my way back to Riverwood. It's north. We go north. Wait, which way is up? Yeah, north. Okay. Uh, okay. That's something, right? Much better than nothing. We just need a way to get north that doesn't involve me walking all the way. Or me flying. I'm not flying all that way. I tire easily. An airship? Wait. I feel a cunning plan coming on. Follow me, Zoe. Uh-oh. It's either a cunning plan, or I need the toilet. But I'm pretty sure it's a cunning plan. I still can't believe you pulled off the voice and the whole fake hand thing. The hat looked great on you. Oh, totally. Uh, not so sure about the beard, though. My face is itchy. Speaking of faces, I can never show mine in Mercuria again. Not after that last bit we did. If everything goes well, you won't have to. At least we have a ride. Can I trust this thing? They're docile cows, the Elguan. Just leave it to me. Mush, Daisy! Mush! Whoa, whoa, I think you're upsetting her. I love. I'll leave the cowgirling to you. I'll fly ahead and scout the terrain instead. Don't lose sight of me! Hope Riverwood is near, because this thing seems awfully slow. How much longer will this journey take? Must be nearly a week now. It's been less than two days, and I'm beginning to regret bringing you along. You're stuck in the cargo hold of a cloud ship with your worst enemy. How could you possibly have any regrets? And people say you have no sense of humor. If there was ever a time to make peace with Liko, this is likely it. Maybe there's still a chance to create a bond between us. We're on a mission. This is neither the time nor place to make peace with Liko. 
We already fight side by side. That's our bond. Besides, I'm tired. If the I'm sorry about your father. I know that may not amount to much now, but I was a different person then. I was blind to the possibility that there could be more than one truth. There's been so much death on the road to this place. I murdered an innocent man during my escape from Friar's Keep. He begged me to, but I still don't know if I did the right thing. I ran Balse Bakim through and watched him bleed to death so that I could make my escape through a blood magic portal. I still wonder if his sacrifice was worth it. Have I repaid that debt? Shepard believes so. But many thought him a better man than I, so why did he have to die? What did I gain from these actions? What did it change? What would have been different had I acted differently? All of these choices, Lika, they add up. My soul is heavy. The others believe me unaffected because I carry on as if nothing happened. But their faces and voices are there when I close my eyes. Those deaths never leave me. No words can undo these deeds. There are no excuses for the wrongs I've committed. But I am trying to heal the wounds I've inflicted. It's a long journey, Liko. And I know. When you arrived from Friar's Keep, I wanted you dead. Really? I couldn't tell. And people say you have no sense of humor. They do? We've been through much since then. I believe I know you. A little. You've taken up arms against your own people, risking shame, death, and your immortal soul. Because you believe they're misguided. And it cannot be easy being hated and feared by both sides. I may still despise you because you murdered my father. I may still dislike you because you're an arrogant and intolerant shit. But I respect you, Kian. And I trust you. That trust goes both ways, Liko. Well, I'm taking a nap. This half of the hold is mine. Stick to your side. Or I may stab you in my sleep. Don't worry. I've no intention of cuddling up next to you. Kian, are you awake? I wasn't. This has now changed. Did I ever tell you how my society views people like us? I don't believe so. The Dole and Tiqua consider themselves tolerant and inclusive in all matters. And yet I've always had to hide who I am from my family and friends. If they knew the truth, I'd be ostracized. Tolerance, it seems, has its limits. But in the Resistance, no one cares. This thing we share? It doesn't change how they feel about us. It's strange. Strange, but liberating. With the Resistance, you are who and what you decide to be. Regardless of color and creed, gender and religion, and... I thought you loved April Ryan. I did. I do, but... Not like that. She was someone I cared deeply about and always will. But I could never have shared my life with her. I still miss her every day. She gave me strength. Nah, I'm going back to sleep. We have a long day ahead of us tomorrow. A day of sitting in the dark, bickering about who passed gas? Like I said, a long day. That was a nice little moment. That's a creepy image.
Do you think Keon has any chance with Liko? I mean, I know Keon killed his father and all, but... I mean... Maybe? Never trust an Elguan, cowardly cows. Oh, something must have spooked it. What do we do now? This place looks familiar. I think we're close. In fact, I think we're... Leave! Go, or I'll call the others! Whoa, hey there, I'm, I'm friendly and, and unarmed. You're human. You can't be fr... Bird? Crowbird? Hello. Hey, you're that fretful furry thing we met the first time we came through here. Ben... Franklin. Ben Bandu. <laughs> this isn't the same human who accompanied you last time. This is my new human. She's mostly harmless. Say hello, Zoe. Don't be rude. I remember them from the first longest journey. I guess... hello. Hello. Are you the new Bandu Mbata? Bamboo, what? No, I have no idea. I'm Zoe. You're a dreamer. So they keep saying. I'm not very good at it. How did you know? We live close to the dreaming here. Her dreams surround us. The Yaga. That's it! That's the one we're looking for, right, Zoe? The Yaga! You're... you're looking for the Yaga? Are, on purpose? Are you mad? Oh, I'm not. Her? I'm not so sure about. You know the Yaga? She lives in this forest. We do not speak her name. She's... She's mean. Oh, the Yaga. I think they're talking about that, uh... That witch that we encountered in The Longest Journey. Right? I remember... But the witch was around this area, and I remember there's a whole, like, escape sequence in The Longest Journey to get away from her. We need to find her right now, but we can't bring Furball with us. Don't call him Furball. Come on, Zoe. We'll save time if we ask the Ewok to show us the way to the Yaga. My god, Zoe, you're so rude. Teddy Bear probably knows more about the Yaga. <laughs> Three different options for sort of insulting names. Who is she? The... Yaga? She's old. Really old. She's been around since long before my people came to this forest. Once, she had many servants. Witches, warlocks, evil ones. Like in the stories told by the elders. But her servants are all gone now. So she woke up and crossed into our world. She doesn't belong here. But she's lonely and hungry. Hungry. Great. Well, we still have to find her. She has the Soul Stone. The Soul Stone? I've heard of the Soul Stone. The Yaga took it from the fallen fortress of her warlock. Warlock? Roper Clax worked for the Yaga? They all did. The Gribbler, Clax, all the evil witches and warlocks of the Northlands. But they're gone now. Just like my people. April Ryan imprisoned the warlock and killed the witch. She saved us all. But then... Then the Azadi came with sharp blades and metal tubes that spewed fire. They murdered most of us. Some fled east. I'm the only one left here now. That's terrible. I'm so sorry. One day, they'll come back. All the surviving Banda... Until then, I watch over their burrows, and I sing. For them. For all of us. This soul stone, it's important? Very. You'll use it to fight the Azadi? That's part of it, yes. 
I'll take you to the Yaga. Or as close as I dare go to her lair anyway. Great! I was expecting you to say no, and by expecting, I mean hoping. Does the bird always speak like that? I'm afraid so. Lead the way, Ben. So I guess the Yaga is not what I encountered in the longest journey. What I encountered, the witch was someone who worked for the Yaga. Or was controlled by the Yaga. I think it was more a control thing than an employer the Yaga's kind of thing. beyond the ridge. Once you cross that, you're in her realm. You're not coming with? Did you not hear me when I said she was hungry? No, I'm not coming with you. The walls of that place are thin, and she can smell my magic. A wise decision, tiny man. Come on, Zoe, let's turn around and head back with Ben Ben. Maybe catch a fat squirrel and roast it for dinner? This is what we came here for. If we don't get the soul stone- Everyone dies, the world ends, no more Christmases, blah, blah, blah. I'm so sick of walking into one perilous scenario after the other. After we're done with this one, no more adventures. I swear to the feather gods of old. You'll know you're there when you see the Gribbler's old house. She was the witch who lived here before. The Gribbler served the Yaga, and that's where she came through from the beyond. Will you wait for us, Ben? I'll wait until nightfall. But if you're not back by then... We'll be back. And I had such a craving for Crispy Squirrel. Okay, well I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return we're gonna go find the Gribbler's house. And hopefully the portal or whatever it is to find the Yaga.